I'm Pauline Shirelli, the Associate Professor of Physiotherapy here at the University of Newcastle in New South Wales. I'm a pelvic floor physiotherapist, which in the past has been mostly re related to women's waterworks. And this DVD specifically concentrates on the guys bits below the belt and the pelvic floor and how important it is in giving you control of your bladder. Problems with your waterworks can take a couple of forms. You can have an overactive bladder where you've got urgency and frequency and you're getting up through the night to pee. You can have bladder outlet signs where you have trouble emptying your bladder. You pee in stops and starts and you can't get started. You never feel like you've finished. And then of course there can be problems that result from surgery or radiation therapy for prostate cancer. So you want to know how many problems you can have with your waterworks? Well, in my experience, guys can have urgency, which is the knee crossing, eye watering, desire to pee. They can have urge incontinence, where they don't quite make it to the toilet on time. Frequency, going to the toilet at the drop of a hat. Hesitancy, where you're standing there at the toilet and it just won't start and it won't start, sometimes called the bashful bladder. Peeing in hiccups which is called an intermittent stream, stopping and starting. At the end, you never really feel that you've um, emptied your bladder properly. And then you can have, of course, a problem of what we call terminal dribble, where the last three drops runs down the leg of your trousers when you've left the toilet. And that can be really, really embarrassing. I think we need to have a really close look at the bits below the belt, exactly what you've got and how it works. The pelvic floor muscles go from the hard bone in front, called your pubic bone, right through to the tip of your tailbone. They actually sit underneath your prostate gland, so that when the surgeon's shelling out the prostate, it's almost impossible for him not to take some part of the sphincter or the pelvic floor muscles as he goes. When you have your prostate removed, you can imagine that you lose quite a part of the urethra, which is the tube from the bladder to the outside. The length of the urethra is important because it gives you what we call urethral closing pressure. This helps to keep you dry. Men have an internal urethral sphincter way up at the bladder neck above the prostate, and the role of that sphincter is to keep the ejaculate from going up into the bladder and make sure it goes down and out where it's needed. They also have an internal sphincter that works within the urethra, wrapped around the urethra, to help keep you continent and keep you dry. The pelvic floor lifts the bladder, and that's important in a number of ways. Firstly, when you lift the bladder, you lengthen the outlet tube. Now that means that the pressure inside the tube is increased. When you lift the bladder, you're also squeezing the bladder neck shut. When the pelvic floor muscle lifts the bladder, it's also sending a message to the bladder muscle itself to tell it to be quiet, not to squeeze and empty. Because when you do a wee, the urine doesn't run out it's pushed. The bladder is a big muscular sac that's job is to push the urine out down through the outlet tube. A lot of men have no idea how to actually squeeze up the pelvic floor muscles and often think they're doing the right thing, but in my experience are often doing the very wrong thing. Now there are a couple of simple tricks that we can use mainly to do with positioning so that when you first start your pelvic floor squeezes, you're going to give these muscles the really best chance to start working from the word go and not to be making mistakes. You know, there are a quarter of a million Australian guys out there with leaking urine problems. To say nothing of the number of guys with lower urinary tract symptoms. You're not alone. When you're following these exercise programs, try as hard as you can, try consistently, but don't go too long without noticing some improvement before you seek help. There's plenty of help out there. Make an appointment to talk it through with your GP. See if your physiotherapist knows uh, and works in this particular area. See if there's a nurse continence advisor attached to your community health centre. There's lots of help. You're not alone. Don't go to it, guys, and good luck.